Imagine you're a hominin living in 380,000 BCE thinking you made it. You have your canopy, your rations, your life expectancy of less than 30 years, and chances of being eaten by a predator in the age of the megafauna. Life is pretty good, right? Well, to them maybe, to us, not so much. Somewhere in between then and now, we moved from living under trees and in caves to houses, creating some absolute masterpieces in our wake. What the hell? So who was this groundbreaking first person to have a house? To make the indoors? Well, it wasn't actually one person. Let me introduce you to the Homo heidelbergensis species of hominids, and the Terra Amata. They didn't have TV back then, but this definitely would have made it on MTV Cribs. So what is the Terra Amata? For starters, it was officially discovered by Henry de Lumley, a French archaeologist and prehistorian in the year 1966, and is believed to be the very first ever human house. There were oval huts ranging from 26 to 49 feet long and 13 to 20 feet wide with stakes as walls and an outside ring of stones with larger posts inside to keep the structure up. There was a hearth enclosed by a bed of beach stones by the entrance surrounded by workspaces. The hunter-gatherer community would come to an inlet in what is now Nice, France in the spring and summer months to hunt for food. They set up their huts, built hearths, windscreens, made tools for the hunt, hunted for one to two days, and left. And I know what you're thinking. At least put it on Airbnb if you're not going to be there. It's not like there were any other listings. Picture this. A rustic, open layout, cozy cottage from Harry the Hominin, who would be a super host. Alongside wonderful amenities, like an in-room fire pit, open-style layout, and hand tools. They would be booked all year long. But there was a good reason why this was. The Terra Amata allowed them a place to gather about the fire, create tools, and prepare in the period before the hunt. They didn't need it to be somewhere where they lived year-round. They were hunting for particular animals that we hypothesize required they set up these spaces to be well-equipped. Now, what they were hunting was definitely not compliant with the HOA. A majority of the bones in their habitation represent larger animals, like the stag service elephants, wild boar, ebex, in Merck's rhinoceros. So yes, the first people with a crib literally ate elephants and rhinos, and they would selectively target the children of the species. You know, maybe that's why they didn't stick around too long. Okay, so an ancient, largely forgotten species of early hominids bossed up and made a hut. Big deal, who cares? And yes, it may not seem like such a big deal to you or I who get the luxury of paying rent or mortgage, dealing with maintenance and repairs, door-to-door -door salesman, and Karen from the HOA who wouldn't let me keep my basketball hoop up. Sorry, I digress. It is a big deal when you consider the context of the time. Here we have a species developing a relatively complex social dynamic of gathering and planning for a hunt, and choosing to set up in an area of abundant wildlife. Previously, they were controlled by where their immediate natural shelters could be found. These trailblazers also made use of the very recent development of the fire in the form of a hearth to gather around, and they certainly weren't short of spooky stories to share with the savage conditions of the time. A species that until literally this moment just took what the world gave it, well no longer. This singular instance was the domino that brought you the roof you are under today, and some of these other iconic buildings. Someone had to be first. These hominoids will never know the influence they had. They are a product of their environment, whose decisions culminated and grew over the millennia to eventually bring us the modern houses we have today. So if you're a hominoid in the late 380,000 BCE era, and your boy says he's kicking it at the crib, he just might be. <laughs>